Hi guys, this is Hai Kumar Kortiwada. In this video, we will learn how to use a resolver and what are resolvers in Angular. So let me quickly jump into Visual Studio Code for better understanding. So here, let's understand something about on init before going into resolvers. For example, you have something called as login.component.ts and inside this, let me write an on init. Already we know that on init requires an interface so I am implementing an on init this is an interface given by angular and for this we have something called as ng on init like that we have many lifecycle hooks now let me write one console over here console dot log off on init and this is my previous project where already I have configured all the routes and everything in our code. So let me go to the browser and here you can see I am in register page and let me inspect and let me go to the console over here and then let me zoom it a bit here also. Yeah, when I click on the login so you can see here we are getting on in it and we are getting the role whatever the data we are passing from your routing. So if you see your login.ts this is the routing snapshot data that means this data is passed from our route. If I go to app routing and here we are passing some set of data for our login that is role is equal to admin. Now what I want to do is I want to add one particular resolver. So what is the purpose of resolver and why we need to use resolver. So if you see here we are calling on in it once the component is loaded or a page is loaded and also we are getting the data from our routes once the page is loaded but in a situation where we may need to know the data prior to the on in it what would be the situation for example you have some set of data which you need to show in the page without a loading indicator and it should not take more time once the component is loaded so on in it what it will do it will load all the static content on your UI and then it will start executing the on in it if you are calling an API inside this on in it or asynchronous call inside this on in it it may take one or two seconds and it will get your data and then that data will be shown on the UI but how resolver helps us resolver helps us before navigating once I click on the login the navigation starts and once the navigation starts then this resolver can be called and once the resolver is resolved then we will be going on to the login page and once the login page is landed or rendered we will be ready with the data which is passed from our resolver so to make it very simple this resolvers is used to call some set of data before rendering your UI of that particular page. So let me go here. Now let me write a resolver here. So how can we write a resolver? First thing we need to create the resolver. We have a command line interface for creating the resolver. Let me go and create our resolvers. So ng generate and let me give r for resolver and give a resolver name for now I am giving the resolver as API and I don't want to create this spec file skip hyphen tests and hit enter now it has been called a resolver and it created one resolver you can see this resolver let me use control and click this so it open the resolver this is the boilerplate code by running this particular command we got all this code and if you see this is same like your service only injectable so we will be talking about services further but remember that it acts like a service and also we have export class api resolver so here what is this api resolver i gave api the name api and the resolver is a suffix which added because of this command and now it implements a resolve interface so where this resolve interface is coming from it is coming from our route so this interface has one inbuilt method called as resolve and this resolve will take the route that means activated snapshot route and the state that means router sna state snapshot these are the two properties which will be taken by this resolve 
method so this resolve method is coming from this resolve interface and what it is expecting to return by default it is expecting to return an observable with a boolean value so i'll not change anything in this just i'll try to utilize this resolver in our login route and we'll capture that in our login component so how to do that i have a resolver this resolver will return an observable with a true value so let me go here and go to your login component here inside the login component you have a property called as resolve whatever the resolver you want to write you can write over here for this particular route itself so it will not work for all the routes it will work only for this login route because i am configuring that resolver only in this object so let me go here resolve is an object it will take some set of data so for example i have a um, property called as is resolved and it will take one function or a class the class name is resolver class let me copy this resolver class and put it over here and just import it so now we have is resolved and is resolved will capture the data which is returned from this api resolver what it is returning it is returning a true value so now this true value will be returned and that will be captured in this resolve and now how to capture this inside our login component so let's go into the login component already we have activated route dot snapshot dot data so this data is a responsible person to give all the information about the resolvers as well as the static data whatever we are passing in the data object so data will combine with our resolver and then it will try to give you the whole data in your snapshot which is activated route so let me go here into the api resolver and let me go here and write one console because i want to show which one will be called whether on it or resolve so let me write it as resolver and just save it go to the browser and just let me go to register and click on login so if you see here first it called resolver api resolver and then you are getting the data in this data is resolved true this is the property which we are passing from our resolver so resolver is sending this is resolved true and that is combined with our data this data is already exist here if you see in your app routing you have a data called as a role with admin so role as admin but why it is not showing admin because if you see the login module and if you see the login routing inside this we have configured these two properties inside our login with id so what is our path login slash id that means this login slash id has a title and the role this title and this role is visible here to understand about this data please watch my previous videos how to pass the data in your routes so i have explained completely about this data in my routes class so let me remove this and remove this now this resolver will not be only for one component it will be for login module that means this module contains two different routes for the two different routes this resolve will be used so if i see that login module and inside the login module we have two routes which are pointing same component so for this two paths and two components that resolver will be available so let me go here and just go into our login which is a default path and even you can see a resolver and also then you can see is resolved true and the role is admin so role is admin and the title is login without id so i am using a login without id if you see this login routing here the title is login without id and the role is admin so now we got a role and we got a title from this data object and also this is combined with is resolved property so we got is resolved with api resolver so that is how you can set your data and pass the data to your component so this is a simple example but this is not the real time example in the real time what we generally do is we will call some set of api before going into the login page we'll call some api example you are calling is authenticated or you want a list of users so such type of things so what i'll do is i'll just go into the api resolver and change our logic now
so this is a default like just it's a boolean value so now what I'll do is I'll just go here and I'll just explain how to create an API call now but we'll go in deep in our next upcoming videos whenever we are going with the services so I am doing a private HTTP client and HTTP client module so it is not showing in the IntelliSense why because my app module let me go into app module yeah I can write here itself HTTP client module so this module is not showing in the IntelliSense let me get it from import import from at the rate angular slash common slash HTTP so you will be getting the HTTP module from here HTTP client module and just copy this HTTP client module put it over here and save this now go to the resolver and you can just import this now you got HTTP client from common slash HTTP let me save this now I wanna call an API so how to call an API let me go here and go to JSON placeholder this is an fake API call so let me go to the HTTPS call so let me copy this and now what I'll do is I'll use this dot HTTP client dot get of an URL so don't bother about this HTTP and how it works we'll talk about this bit later so dot I'm just using two promise so that I'm converting into a promise based and I'll just await it await so that it will wait for some time and once this gets resolved then you will be getting the data so that's why I'm using just await and I'll be getting some data const data is equal to and I want to return this data and just write the console over here console.log of data and now it is throwing an problem in the return type let's solve this return type before that we are using await so let me make it as async now this async resolve will await for this data and it will return this data but if you see it is returning some data but it requires an observable of boolean but I don't want to go with the boolean part so let me use promise because we are returning a promised data so let me save this and also let me copy the same thing over here save this so let's go here and see how this resolver is resolved and what the data we are getting over here so let me go here and you can see all the 200 data we got that means we are getting this data and then we are going to the login component and then we are getting the data inside the is resolved inside the is resolved we have all these 200 records you can see here we got 200 records in our API resolver so how it generally works let me go to the source and go to the resolver so let me minimize this a bit and resolver if you go to the resolver let me put the checkpoints so let me put a checkpoint here and here and then let me go into login component and inside this login component let me put the console or debugger here so when I go to register okay fine and let me go to login so first where it came API dot resolver and then it is going to the next line then it waits some time and once the data is received it will be coming here because we are awaiting it if you don't await it what's the problem over here if you are not awaiting it it will directly receive this data and then immediately jump into your login component so that's why I'm awaiting until I get the data I'm not moving into the login route if you see here still we are in register only not in the login that means once the resolver resolves the data then we are moving into the login page let me go to the next and next let me click on this see here now my resolver resolved some data and we are moving into login slash one two three so one once we move into the login then it came into the constructor and then it will go into the on in it so this is the flow how it generally works in our application and if you go to the console and you can see the role and inside the role we are passing is resolved is resolved is a property of our data so if you want to change the data with a name with a proper naming just make it as resolved data and save this let me go here and in, just pass this off 
yeah so if you go to the console and open this resolved data we have all the 200 records and now these 200 records can be used over here so that is how we can use our resolved data and we'll talk about failures of http calls in our upcoming videos whenever we are discussing the api calls and the uh, subscriptions then we'll understand how we can subscribe or await all these concepts so here we are using a new concept called as async and await i'll try to make a video on async and await why to use and how to use that in our javascript videos but for now this is the pattern how we can use our http client in our angular application hope you are clear with the resolvers and also one thing i want to tell you where if you are giving this property as a same something which is already existing for example already i have a role in our data and i am giving a resolve which would be the priority let's see let me go here and just resolve this i'll just remove this debugger and go to the console and you can see role is user special why because resolver will be the last priority data will be combined with our resolver so if the role is common in resolver and the data then the data will always be the priority compared to resolver so always remember two, these two should not be same if they are same then always the priority will go to the data object which we have hard coded so this is about resolvers and also one point to remember is you have resolve object and you have data object we can do everything in data object also why we are not doing that actually speaking in the data object it will not call any classes it accepts only the static data and it will only return some data from a particular function but it will not resolve some set of classes that is possible only by resolvers that's why he provided one more object called as resolve object and if you don't want to put this at the login module level then you can cut this and put it only at the specific component level in your particular routing path so hope you like my explanation if you like my video like share subscribe to my channel for more updates signing off thank you